Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Crumpty News at Noon. I'm Nicole Hernandez in for Laura Papetti. We have some breaking news to start with on the national scale. Just a few hours ago, House Republicans nominated Representative Steve Scalise to be the new House Speaker. Scalise is the majority leader right now, and in a private vote, House Republicans picked him over Representative Jim Jordan. Now, the full House has to vote to make this official. They could vote as soon as tonight. Obviously, we uh, have a very important vote. It's really, really important that this Congress get back to work. We select a speaker, go to the House floor, get to 218, and then get the House working again. Officially nominated Scalise, both candidates are still trying to get to the 218 votes they need to become House Speaker. For the latest updates, you can check our website, crime.com. And we do want to transition to some stuff here locally because Thomas, uh, is that green that I'm seeing on the map there? <laughs> we were talking little. about rain, right? <laughs> yeah, well, not as much rain as yesterday, but we are still keeping an eye out for any scattered showers. Just today is a little bit lighter in that regards. In fact, we've had a little bit of sunshine trying to poke through some of that cloud cover. So we do have a storm system that is passing through the Pacific Northwest. In fact, it's centered almost exactly over Seattle right now. So it's drawn a lot of Pacific moisture and it's going to dump a lot of that over the western side of the states and just leave a couple scattered showers here out east. As we zoom on in, there's not much to see on Doppler radar, just a little bit over some of these far north mountains uh, across Ponderé County and up towards the panhandle of North Idaho. Could be some showers over the mountains of Kootenai County, but doesn't look uh, particularly impressive anywhere in the inland northwest. So again, a much drier day today compared to yesterday, but we could see any one of those clouds overhead try to give us a scattered shower into the afternoon. So we will keep an eye on Doppler radar for you in that regards, and those temperatures will likely hover in the mid 50s today. Today will be our coolest day that we have remaining this week and promising more sunshine, a little bit warmer to finish the week and have the latest details on when you can see the solar eclipse this weekend. It's a forecast you don't want to miss in a couple minutes. Well, at least one person was shot and hurt in a drive-by shooting in the Garland District last night. The shooting happened around 8, at 8 o'clock in the evening. Police say one person had to go to the hospital, but they're not saying how injured they are. They also are not saying if they have arrested anyone. We are making calls this morning and this afternoon asking what led up to this shooting. We have not heard back yet, but we will let you know as soon as we get any information. And a new chapter has officially begun in Airway Heights. Yesterday, city officials and residents gathered for the ribbon cutting ceremony of a brand new public safety campus. A fire station, police station and a new city hall will all call this spot home here pretty soon in the future. This new $8 million facility was made possible by a bond that voters passed in Airway Heights back in August. As the city of Airway Heights continues to grow, many around the area think it'll be a vital location for city services. The city says they're hoping to be all moved in by spring of 2025. Volunteers are starting to clean up the vandalized pride mural in the Perry District today. People have targeted Odyssey Youth Movement and the Rainbow Crosswalk outside of their doors several times in the last month. Spokane Arts had to go through the process to get the right street permits and have a traffic control plan before they could start cleaning up. But now this morning, as you can see, volunteers have been out there scrubbing out that graffiti and the splattered paint. Luckily, we already have this planned for today. So I'm glad we can get it off quickly. Tomorrow, Odyssey and the South Perry Business and Neighborhood Association is having a pop-up Pride event. They're working together in the neighborhood to show solidarity and unity despite the vandalism. That pop-up event, event is tomorrow on Thursday at the South Perry District from 4 to 6 p.m. The Kootenai County Commissioners voted unanimously last night to give the Sheriff's Office $10 million. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press say $9 million of that will be for increasing the county jail capacity. The past few years, the jail has been overcrowded. Last year, they actually failed a jail inspection. Sheriff Bob Norris says they failed because they don't have enough funding. The other million dollars will help the Sheriff's Office cover the city of Hayden. Right now, the Sheriff's Office already patrols Hayden since Hayden PD only has one officer and that one officer is on administrative leave right now. We don't know why that officer is on leave, but you might remember last month we told you the department put them on leave just days after they questioned an order from the city's mayor. 
And meanwhile, the Kootenai County Fire Department is working to keep up with more people moving to North Idaho. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press said last week the county broke ground on a new fire station out in Post Falls. Fire Chief Chris Way says the almost 14,000 square foot station will be able to hold two or three fire or ambulance crews. A bond voters passed back in the spring of 2021 is what's funding this. They think they'll have it all built up by August of 2024. And this is one of three new stations coming to Kootenai County.